Hello and welcome to another of our introductory videos to temperature metrology. And here we're looking at top tips for handling ISOTEC semi-standard platinum resistance thermometers. And in the first part we'll look at what a platinum resistance thermometer is and what our semi-standard thermometers are. So the International Temperature Scale of 1990, the ITS 90, specifies the standard platinum resistance thermometer over the range from minus 259 to 962 degrees C. And these SPRTs are suited to the primary calibration laboratory with accuracy to less than 1000 per degree C. But for many applications that is not suitable for reasons of fragility and cost. In the photograph we can see the fine coil of platinum wire. Uh, it's very gently supported and in many applications just the handling of the thermometer would spoil it. So great inside the calibration laboratory but not so much useful outside of a primary laboratory. Our semi-standard PRTs are purpose designed to calibrate industrial thermometers like the metal sheaved and they're both less fragile and more affordable than SPRTs. They can be calibrated to have performance to just a few hundredths of a degree at 660 degrees C. We do have a separate video introducing SPRTs which you can find on our channel. But with a semi-standard platinum resistance thermometer, the same as a platinum resistance thermometer, we rely on the change of electrical resistance with temperature. And for the industrial PRTs, uh, this is the relationship between resistance and temperature. And that's specified in the standard IEC 60751. It's newly revised edition 3 in 2022. And this is the standard of use. And it talks about the standard for platinum resistance thermometers uh, with a, an alpha of 385. This relates to the purity of the platinum wire. The SPRTs use a higher purity wire. That higher purity wire again is more easily contaminated and changed. And with the wire in the industrial PRTs, it's more stable and we need to be well, still careful. You know, we've got more freedom with it. So here we are, the platinum resistance thermometer, also known as industrial platinum resistance thermometers, often abbreviated to a PRT or an IPRT. And inside the PRT is a resistance temperature detector. The PT100 is the most common type. And that's a device with a resistance of 100 ohms at 0 degrees C. And this is a, a typical platinum element. Uh, they vary in, in shape and size. Here's a smaller one. And manufacturers use these as the basis to make a complete thermometer. Some PRTs will use a thin film of platinum rather than a coil of platinum wire, but the best types use a, use a coil. Uh, the standard has um, better tolerances for the wound types, and all ice tech thermometers will use wire wound RTDs. To make an ISTEC PRT, we start off with wire so fine you can barely see it, finer than a human hair, typically 250 millimetres long, with a tolerance of just 0.05 millimetres. That wire is wound into a coil and hand assembled into the ceramic housing element to create the sensor. Those fine coils are partially supported in glass. If the entire coil was fused in glass, the wire would become strained with the expansion and contraction of temperature change. And that strain would increase the resistance of the wire causing drift. So partially supported detectors, which allow the wire to expand and contract more freely, give the best performance. So when it comes to the internal construction, uh, different sizes and types of thermometer, uh, but the platinum RTD we saw will, will invariably at the tip for a reference thermometer. These sensing lengths will vary and the temperature ranges will vary, but the basic construction will have that element at the tip of the thermometer. So it's very important not to drop a PRT. The outside is solid and rugged, but the internal sensor can be damaged. And in the picture here, we've got an X-ray of a PRT that had been dropped and you can see the turns of platinum have been bunched together and distorted. Uh, the shorted turns will you know, destroy the thermometer, the resistance will change lower and intermittently. So it's very important with PRTs that we handle them carefully. 
Guide them gently to the bottom of the thermometer pocket and avoid dropping them. And if at all possible, do not move a PRT when the temperature is above 450 degrees C. It's best not to take a thermometer at room temperature and plunge it straight into a furnace at say 660 degrees. It would be better to preheat the thermometer and then to lower it in gently or to heat the thermometer more slowly to avoid thermal shock. When it comes to safe handling, don't use PRTs above their maximum temperature or there'll be contamination. Many probes are limited to 450 degrees C because they're made from stainless steel. If you exceed 450 degrees C, um, gases from the stainless steel outgassing will destroy the purity of the platinum wire and also the insulation around the, ca the, insulation around the cables can be damaged if a probe exceeds its maximum temperature. And in the same way, don't use PLTs below the minimum rating. Uh, the materials used inside can shrink and crack and allow moisture to enter. Be careful um, at the head of the thermometer if, it's, if there's a handle or some other termination point, the materials used here won't be rated for the, necessarily the whole temperature range. Um, for many thermometers, this handle part needs to be kept about 80 degrees C. And again, don't get too cold. Cryogenic temperatures can crack the seals and damage the thermometer, again, with perhaps moisture entering. So um, that's our introduction. Um, join us for part two when we'll look at getting good results with PRTs. And then we'll move to part three of how to test PLTs.